and welcome to CodeWiz Joe. In this video, I will show you how to write a script in Python where we can buy token from PancakeSwap. And the great thing, this, uh, this script also works on Uniswap. So how does it work? I'm going to show you here my code. So I have here uh, my code, so the script. And when I run this script, we are prompted to enter an, an address. So a token address, and then we can purchase this uh, token from PancakeSwap. So the token has to, of course, has to be listed on PancakeSwap for this to work. And yeah, but it will work with every token on PancakeSwap. And what we do is we will use uh, we will use BNB to purchase a token. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to show you this. Python dot by Pancake is the file name, and then when I run it. So now we can enter the contract of the of the token we want to buy and I hit enter and here we go we get a transaction hash and when I go back here to the blockchain explorer I can paste in the transaction hash that I received and then we can see that I purchased just right now 10 seconds ago from my address and I spent 0 .00, 0 .00, 0 0.001 wrapped BNB and I bought uh, around 10 9 Yorkies okay this is how the script works as I said the same script works on PancakeSwap because PancakeSwap is a copy of Uniswap so it doesn't it also works in Uniswap I will demonstrate it on PancakeSwap this is again PancakeSwap being a copy of Uniswap so everything you see me do here you can uh, replicate this and do on the Ethereum mainnet and the code that I'm writing here is really great because then we can use this, you know, to build trading bots or, you know, anything else. So how does this work? So first thing we have to look how a transaction works on PancakeSwap. So when I come here to trade, I go here to exchange and then I'm, I can... So it gives me my balance in BNB. And then I can select a token that I want to buy. I'm just using the token that I just purchased. So my bad. I have to use the contract address. Okay, so no results were found this token. This is strange. Um, well, let's just use a different token then. I'm just using here bunny token. This works with any token what I demonstrate here. So now I select the amount that I want to purchase. And then it gives me some um, a number of the amount of token that I can actually get for this price. So at the current price, I will receive X amount of token. So here we get number. So 0 0.0, let me 0 0.01 BNB uh, give me 14, uh, 0.49 bunny token. Now, what I want to do is we click here on swap and then our MetaMask, so I confirm here swap. And unfortunately, you don't see that step. So my MetaMask pops up and it should pop up with you too. And when you go all the way on top in MetaMask, in the first line it shows uh, the chain where we are connected to. And the line below shows the account that makes the uh, transaction to another smart contract address. And the smart contract address should start with 0x10. We can just click on it and then we can just uh, reject the transaction here in MetaMask. I dismiss this. And then I go back here to the Binance Chain Explorer and I copy in this address here, the 0x10 address. This is the really important address here. And this is the PancakeSwap router address. So as you can see, whenever we do a trade to uh, purchase this token, we have to interact with the smart contract from PancakeSwap. And the smart contract looks like this. So we can go here to contract and we can see here the contract of um, Pancake swap. Then we can click here on read contract. And this gives us all the read functions. It gives us a factory address and it gives us the, in this case, again here, the code from Pancake swap is a clone from Uniswap. So if you read here Uniswap, uh, this, we cannot see this in the code. Let me see. We find this something from Uniswap because the uh, contract here was originally written for Uniswap. But as I said, this is exactly the same. Uh, actually, they rewrote their contract, so this is actually for 
uh, Pancake Swap. It was written originally for Pancake Swap. Anyways, but this code, um, yeah, my bad. Oh, no, here it says Uniswap library contracts. Yeah, I was right. So originally it was uh, written for Uniswap, but Uniswap, it, Pancake Swap being a copy of Uniswap, you know, it works here on Pancake Swap. So let's not get distracted here. Um, what I want to show you is here the write function. So when we want to execute a trade, we have to interact with a smart contract. And when we interact with the smart contract, we have to call a function. And we can go here to, where is the function? So when we buy a token, we call this for our, yeah, when we buy a token, we call this function. So we enter swap exact eat for tokens. This is my bad. This one is the correct one. Swap exact eat for token. Yeah. So it says you swap exact eat for token. Again, you know, being a copy, Ethereum, it works the same way on Binance. So, and we enter here, here it says BNB, here it says ETH, but we can just enter BNB. So what we want to do, we want to swap exact ETH for token. So let's say we want to swap 0.01 BNB, then we should get some amount of tokens. So this is just an approximate amount. Then we have to route this transaction to this wrapped BNB address. So here it says wrapped ETH, but this address is actually on PancakeSwap wrapped BNB. Go back here to my code. On here, so we have to fill in this form so we can swap exact ETH for tokens. So we have the price here. Then we enter the, the pass. So the pass is uh, when we make a transaction, it always goes to wrapped BNB and then to the token address, to the contract address. This is the pass we have specified. So I paste in the first one being the wrapped BNB address and the second one is the address of the token that we want to purchase. And I copy this one in here as well. Then we can specify here in the in in the script uh, where we want to send those tokens. So actually user A can purchase a token for user B and send it to them. So we could specify this, but usually in PancakeSwap, when we purchase the token, we purchase it from our address and the token goes back to our address. So I'm going to copy here my address and paste it in here. And this is the last thing that we need is the deadline. So this is when the transaction expires. So in some case, the transaction gets stuck. Then we have to specify a deadline before the transaction gets reverted. And we can uh, use some epoch time. I don't know what is epoch, current epoch. Something is 165. Hopefully this works. But as I just seen, I'm not connected to the web three, so I have to enter everything again. Oh no, it stays okay, great. And then we can actually make the transaction. We call write and MetaMask should pop up. And if we didn't make any errors, is MetaMask not popping up? We are connected, how come my MetaMask is not popping up? So let me enter here the amount out minimum zero. Okay, now it pops up. And perfect. So again, you don't see my MetaMask and I'm so mad about this. Uh, but if you, you know, followed along and the, you know, everything was okay, then you can see the confirm button and then it gives you the transaction cost for the transaction to purchase the token. And then we can just click on conf uh, reject because we're not going to uh, purchase the token from BSC scan. I was just showing you how to, you know, what the fields are needed in order to purchase token from this smart contract. So we can re reject MetaMask. And then we can actually start coding. So this is how we create the transaction here for PancakeSwap. And now we get here you know, to, let me code this. So I'm having here my script. And I'm going to delete everything. Uh, if you want to do it the same way as I did it, I created my project folder. In my project folder, I have a virtual environment. And in this virtual environment, I have, actually we only need one or two files for this project. The one, the main file is where we write the majority of our code is the by, in my case, the by pancake.py file. And I also have a config.py file. This holds the private key to the address where I want to purchase tokens from. 
And once you have set it up the same way as me, then uh, we have to install one library. This is uh, the Web3 library, and we can install it with pip install Web3. And once, once this is done, then we're actually ready to rock and roll. Uh, what Web3 is, is basically a glue between our script and the blockchain. So we call, when we write functions in our script, we call it on through the Web3 library, and then it's been executed on the blockchain. Okay, so this is basically what Web3 uh, is in a nutshell. And yeah, let's get started here. So I have, I already prepared my code here, of course. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make our imports. So for this project, we importing Web3 from Web3. Then we import JSON. We import config. So if you have your private key in a separate file, you need to import this as well. In my case, it's the config.py file. And I import it with, you know, just the file name, import config. And then I also, if you want to automate this, and for the deadline, we need to import time. And then we can already connect ourselves to the blockchain. And we're using here the Binance Smart Chain. If you were to do this on Ethereum, then instead of uh, using the node here from Binance Smart Chain, you have to use Infura. The rest is basically the same in the whole script. And then we can save this here. So uh, with Web3, we initiate the connection here to the blockchain.